Hello, we will be presenting our paper, Gaussian Process-Based Mean Norm Stabilizing Controller for Control Fine Systems with Uncertain Input Effects and Dynamics. The authors of the paper are Fernando Castaneda, Jason Choi, Bikaza, Claire Tonin, and Kaushal Surinas. I'm Jason, and I'll be presenting the first part. The main motivation of our paper is that model-based controllers have a problem inherent to their nature, model uncertainty. Many real-world systems for which we want to design the controller suffer from all kinds of model uncertainty. We will mainly focus on control of dynamics, whose vector field can be expressed as fx plus gxu. This includes many realistic systems. For example, all systems that can be derived from the Lagrangian dynamics can be expressed in this way. The model uncertainty we deal with is time invariant deterministic uncertainty that can be captured by the vector fields f and g. Therefore, our setting is that we have a nominal model f tilde and g tilde. They might be different from the two plant f and g. Previous work that deals with model uncertainty with data-driven approaches mostly assumed that there is no actuation uncertainty. In other words, they assumed g tilde is equal to g. However, for many control systems, uncertain input effects are prevalent. For example, in mechanical system, uncertainty in the inertia matrix directly induces such uncertain input effects. Our main contribution is that we propose a new method to tackle these uncertain input effects. Therefore, we deal with the setting where both f tilde and g tilde can differ from f and g respectively. This is the overview of our approach. First, we will introduce the concept of control Lyapunov function, CLF. The lead derivative of CLF, V dot, should satisfy a certain property in order to use it for stabilizing the system. We focus on one of the most popular properties that V dot should satisfy, called exponential CLF condition, which imposes V to decay faster than an exponentially decaying curve, therefore stabilizing the system fast enough. The model uncertainty comes into play when we try to impose this condition because V dot depends on the system dynamics. However, regarding our stabilizing objective, the uncertain effects can be captured by a single scalar function named delta. Therefore, we can formulate a supervised learning problem in order to learn this uncertain effect. Specifically, we'll use Gaussian process regression, which provides bounds of prediction confidence together. The main structure we want to capture is that delta has a control fine structure. In order to capture this, we propose a compound kernel called a fine dot product kernel. After applying the GP regression with the proposed ADP kernel, we can derive a probabilistic bound of our model uncertainty term in the CLF condition. From this, we can formulate a chance constraint for the exponential CLF constraint. Finally, we can incorporate this chance constraint into a mean norm controller. This mean norm controller becomes a second order cone program and therefore convex. We will call this controller GPCLF SOCP. Finally, we will give a teaser of the data collection algorithm and demonstrate some results of GPCLF SOCP applied to some toy examples. Now we will go into more details of each component of our framework. So this is a brief overview of control Lyapunov function. If V is positive everywhere except for the origin, and if you can always choose a control input that renders V dot to be negative except at the origin, V is a valid control Lyapunov function. Such U will make the trajectory converge to the origin like this because of the condition that V dot is negative. More formally, if such CLF exists, the system is asymptotically controllable to the origin. We will actually consider a stronger notion of stabilizability by replacing the previous condition on V dot with this one. We will call V that satisfies such property as exponential CLF and the condition on U as the exponential CLF constraint. Intuitively, if this new condition can be satisfied, we have a guarantee that we can always find the control input such that its evolution approaches to zero faster than the exponentially decaying curve. The main assumption of this paper is that V is a locally valid exponential CLF, both for the nominal model and the true plant. The assumption can be mild in the sense that the region of exponential stabilizability can be sufficiently small. The main implication of our assumption is that the nominal model and the true plant share some similarity through the stabilizing property of the same function v. The CLF constraint is linear in u, so using it as a constraint in a mean norm controller results in a quadratic program formulation. We call this CLFQP. In practice, the CLF constraint is often relaxed with a select variable to guarantee feasibility of the problem. Now we'll see how model uncertainty affects our CLFQP controller. Note that we denote nominal model-based quantities with tilde. Our true lead derivative of the CLF v dot is LFV plus LGVU. 
However, this is different from our model-based estimate v dot tilde. Therefore, there exists a mismatch term between v dot and v dot tilde. We'll call this mismatch term delta. Note that delta is affine in u due to the fact that our dynamics is control affine. Now I will hand over the presentation to Fernando. All right, now I'm going to explain how we can use Gaussian process regression to predict the value of the uncertainty delta. Gaussian process regression is a tool from the machine learning literature that is typically used to estimate the value of an unknown function, function h. Uh, this function is modeled as a Gaussian process. In this case, we use mean zero, and the covariance function or kernel frank function is represented as k. So what we do is we collect data from this function, and then we want to predict the value of the function at a target point. And what we do for that prediction is we take the posterior distribution of the function at that point conditioned on the previous data. Uh, and this prediction has a mean mu star, that is the value of our prediction, and the variance sigma star squared tells us how confident we are about that prediction. And we want to apply GP regression to delta, the uncertainty. But this delta has a specific structure that is affine in the control input that we want to preserve. So now we're going to present a more general formulation of this problem, that it's how to do a Gaussian process regression of a compound function that is the dot product between p individual functions, h1 to hp, and y. And uh, we only have measurements of the compound function h of c. We don't have individual measurements of the other functions. So it's natural then to consider uh, p underlying kernels, k1 to kp, one for each underlying function, h1 to hp. And what we do is we combine these kernels into what we call the affine dot product compound kernel that uh, captures the affine structure of the problem. And this uh, affine dot product compound kernel has this quadratic structure in Y, and then the diagonal terms are the individual kernels, K1 to Kp. And a lemma that we have in our paper is that if each Ki is a valid kernel for the space of X, then Kc, the compound kernel, is also a valid kernel for the space of X and Y. And the important thing here is that if we use this affine dot product compound kernel, then the mean of the prediction, mu star, is affine in y, and the variance of the prediction is quadratic in y. Uh, so going back to our problem in which we try to estimate delta, delta is affine in u. So if we use y equals 1 and u, then what we get by using this affine dot product compound kernel is a prediction whose mean is affine in u and whose variance is quadratic in u. And this is going to be very important to preserve the convexity of the optimization problem that we're going to formulate. Okay, now we're going to make use of the Gaussian process upper confidence bound analysis to build confidence bounds on our uncertainty delta. Uh, assumption one says that delta one and each element of delta two have to be members of the reproducing kernel Hilbert space of the respective kernels with bounded RKHS norm. And assumption two says that we have access to noisy measurements of delta and that this measurement noise is zero mean and uniformly bounded. So under these assumptions, what we have is a probabilistic bound on the value of the uncertainty. So we can choose a probability one minus delta, and we know that with that probability, our uncertainty is gonna lie uh, between these two bounds. And now I'm gonna present how we can use this bound on the uncertainty to build a chance constraint that can be incorporated in a convex mean norm optimization-based controller that we call GPCLF SOCP. So we can translate these bounds on the uncertainty to bounds in the CLF derivative, because the CLF derivative is the sum of a model-based term and the uncertainty delta. And then uh, what we know is that for this probability of one minus a small delta, the true value of the CLF derivative is bounded between these two values. But we're mostly interested about the upper bound because we want the derivative of V to be negative. So the worst case scenario is actually the upper bound based on our GP model. So uh, what we can do is use this upper bound to form a chance constraint, that it's this lower constraint, that when satisfied, it guarantees that the true CLF constraint for the true plant is satisfied with a probability one minus a small delta. So uh, again, this is the worst case maximum value of V dot based on our GP model. And we can incorporate this chance constraint into a mean norm optimization problem that solves for the control input at each time step. This optimization problem is convex, specifically it's a second order cone program, thanks to the fact that mu star is affine in u and sigma star squared is quadratic in u. And this is because we're using the affine dot product compound kernel. 
if we used uh, an arbitrary kernel, then this optimization problem would not be convex. Now I'm going to present our data collection algorithm and the results. So uh, our data collection algorithm uh, is in an episodic learning fashion, and it takes as main idea the greedy search of the Bayesian optimization literature. And what it tries to do is get better and better estimates of our uncertainty in order to reduce the conservatism of our controller. So basically reduce the uncertainty of our GP model. And then that way we can get larger and larger regions of attraction of the controller. For more details, please uh, check our paper. Uh, now for the results, uh, we first have an example that is an inverted pendulum in which the mass of the plant is twice the mass of the model. And what we can see in blue is that our GPCLF SOCP gives a very, very similar result to the true plant-based controller that it's in that dashed black line. Whereas the nominal model-based controller in pink and the controller uh, obtained if we assume that there are no input effects in the uncertainty that it's in the orange dashed line, get very bad results. For the kinematic bicycle example, the model uncertainty comes from friction and skid effects. And our goal is to move in a straight line along the X direction. Uh, again, our results are in blue. And what we can see is that we get a monotonically decrease of the control the open function. Whereas if we use the nominal model-based controller in pink, the control the open function would oscillate. So the control the open function constraint would not be satisfied. To summarize, uh, we have presented an approach to do uh, Gaussian process regression for affine target functions through the affine dot product compound kernel. Then we have formulated a chance constraint for the exponential CLF condition that is incorporated in a convex mean norm optimization based controller that we call GPCLF SOCP. After the submission, we have extended this work to the safety critical control case by the use of control barrier functions. And we also present a pointwise feasibility analysis of the proposed optimization problem. This is all, thank you very much.